Hello, I'm Jenny Keel and today I'm going to show you how I paint in pastel. Today I'm going to paint for you Lynn Cove Bridge in Cumbria. It's a lovely bridge in a wild setting. Uh, this is the sketch that I did uh, on site and I'm going to use these colours because they really appeal to me. Okay, Enough to fill the grain and then just press it in a little. Of course you can layer things as well. Another a benefit of this uh, sandpaper is that it, it means you can get lots of layers on before you fill the tooth. This top edge is a little bit fuzzy, so I'm just going to tidy it up with the colour shaker. This is um, marvellous for cleaning up messy lines and filling in the grain of the paper. And I'm keeping the distant colours nice and cool, and that helps with the uh, to create a sense of recession. It's somewhat um, absorbed the modelling, but I don't really mind that. Which uh, gives a nice bit of interest and really represents things like dead bracken. And... So the background now is an underpainting and I need to put in a few details to give it a, more of a, a landscape feel. I might take that a little bit further along there. And a broken line is often a nice idea as well because the landscape does undulate quite a bit. Uh, so I've got some dusky red colour here which I'm just stroking in very gently, barely touching the paper as a background colour and leaving some gaps where I can. And maybe lightly. And some of the areas that don't quite work I can lose quickly. To give the branches a little bit of character, I'm turning and twisting the tip and lifting the pressure to get this nice light disappearing line. I need to continue the landscape down here behind the bridge so that uh, the bridge looks natural in its setting. So that's a similar colour to that. I'm just going to soften that in a moment, but down here it goes into the green. So I'll add a few highlights in a little while. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of a bush here, but still quite distant, so small, small enough. Where the sun is catching the stones there and slightly cooler colours on over this side so the more colour you put into your focal point the better it'll stand out and a little warm tangerine sort of colour there I'm using a dark purple grey for this and keeping it nice and neat within the line I drew so that you keep the shape. When you're drawing in the lines, put harder pressure in places and then lighter pressure to give the line more character. This emphasises the uneven nature of the stones. At this stage I'm really just putting down some colour and I'm going to manipulate those colours with the colour shaper. Give a suggestion of 
light catching edges. I find that the colour shaper is essential to my work uh, because it gives me so much control. Rather than use just one colour in shadow, it's nice to have a variety. It makes the shadows less dense. Again, the bottom of the painting is somewhere you don't want to put a lot of detail. It's much, much better to suggest detail than to uh, describe everything. I'm just going to bring a little sweep of this over so that it makes the boulder look round, softening that transition a little. Bearing in mind it's got to follow the same shape. And then I'm going to blend that in. It's quite subtle, but I think it reads a little better.